plantar fasciitis is a pretty horrible pain that people get on the bottom of their foot. And it would go from, plantar fascia goes from about here, from the heel. Well, actually, the Achilles tendon blends into it. And then the, it will go from the heel, and it will stretch the length of the foot uh, to the bottom of the uh, toes, to the tip of the balls of the foot. And that bottom area can get inflamed and very, very painful. I had plantar fasciitis for about four and a half years in, bo uh, in both feet. And it was pretty depressing. It was painful 24-7 from the moment that you get up in the morning until you get into bed at night. And even in bed, it's, you're still in pain. Uh, so what I have learned is that, and this is what I suspected even back then, this is before I knew anything about PRI, was that my p plantar fasciitis is not usually a foot problem. It's usually coming from somewhere else. And I actually got rid of my plantar fasciitis simply by doing hip mobilization exercises. So I knew I had really tight hips and tight lower back. And this was 2005, maybe 2006. Oh, yeah, about 2006. And there was a book called Core Performance by Mark Verstegen, which at that time was pretty revolutionary. And he had you doing all these types of, we called them movement prep, and now they call them dynamic warm-ups. At any rate, doing, doing those exercises, I was actually able to mobilize my hip joints. And at the same time, I found my pain starting to go away. So then I realized you know, this pain that I had for four and a half years that you couldn't even touch my foot without me wincing in pain uh, was not a foot issue. It was a something higher up. And I, you know, I was thinking pelvis. And, uh, it, it, and it is a pelvis issue. But what it usually is, from my experience and from the people I've helped, is the inability for a body to rotate from side to side. And this is exactly what PRI teaches, is that we get stuck over on the right side. And we lose the ability to get fully to the left side. We will go to the left, but we'll do it through compensation. So when we put our weight on our left foot, we'll probably stabilize ourselves not with your glute medius, left hamstring, and left adductor, but you'll probably straighten your knee and use your hip flexors and neck flexors uh, and lower back extensors, basically our extension patterned muscles to help stabilize us on the left side because we've gotten weak and we just don't know how to incorporate that actual movement on the left side. So in the typical left AIC, right BC pattern, the pelvis on the left moves forward and it orients our pelvis to the right. When that occurs, what you, the, weight the common weight distribution pattern is that generally people will feel their weight on the right foot more towards the heel and or outer border, so the, the lateral outside border of that foot, because their weight has shifted them, their pelvis has shifted them over there, and so their weight has put them over to their lateral border and heel. On the left foot, they'll feel more arch, left arch, because again, the pelvis has come forward, so their weight shifts forward, it comes off their heel, it goes to their midfoot, towards their arch, and that's pretty much where they're feeling their, their, their weight on the left foot. They're not feeling left heel. On the right side, they're feeling right heel and right outside lateral border. On the left foot, they're feeling left arch. And every time I work with someone now, I always I have them take off their shoes, and I, ha and I ask them where they're feeling the, their weight on their right foot compared to the left foot, just to make them aware that there are differences. And that's their first lesson on asymmetry. And that is the common pattern. That's not, you're not going to find that with everybody, because there's different variations. But that is the most common finding. So I had someone in the past couple weeks who had plantar fasciitis in his right foot. And we had been doing a couple exercises. We got him neutral. He had a neck that was not moving, so we had to reposition his neck so he could revolve and turn his neck. And that would enable him to actually shift from side to side. A neck that can't move fully will not let your feet go through full ranges of motion. On the right side, when the weight is to the outside of the foot, you don't get your right arch all the way down. So you're kind of walking in a supinated position. 
and you never get full true pronation that brings your weight to the arch of the foot as you push forward. So it should go heel, arch, big toe. When you're supinated, because your weight is to the side, you're kind of you're kind of on the outside the whole time, and you never really push forward. Well, you never feel your you never get your arch down, and you never really feel your right toe push you forward, which means you're going to have to do it one way or another, and it's going to happen through compensation, or you may not get fully to the left. Uh, so, with the guy I was working with, we got his neck moving, uh, we got his pelvis repositioned. We were working on some exercises. He was feeling better, but he was still feeling his right foot. So what I did was I looked at his tibia, and so his tibia is here, and it was really, I, unfortunately I can't separate it from the foot, but it was really externally rotated. And when it's externally rotated, your weight will be on the outside of your foot. Uh, so what I had to do was I took a lateral heel wedge, it's just this little foam thing, and this is the right shoe, and on the right side, right at the, at the lateral border of the heel, I just put that in, well, hopefully you can see it, uh, just like that, and what that did was it, li it pushed, it lifted his right heel a little bit so that his arch would come down. It essentially pushed him down onto that arch so he could actually feel that arch. And at that point, you're going to get much better right glute activation. And the next day, I asked him how he was feeling, and he felt no pain. So his plantar fasciitis had gone away without really doing anything with his feet except give him, giving him sensory information of his right arch. He had to feel his right arch, and he doesn't even need that thing anymore. Actually, it might be counterproductive. He just needed the help. He needed that lateral shoe wedge to help get him onto the arch for his brain to feel that right arch to be okay with pronation, supination, pronation, supination. And when the foot can go through the full range of motion, plantar fasciitis doesn't have to be there because the foot's going through a full range of motion. And uh, that's pretty much what happens. So feet are a really big deal. And if, you're not, if your feet are not going through full range of motion on both sides, your body is not going to alternate on both sides. And you'll often find uh, people who have tight necks who don't have range of motion equalized on both sides will often end up with plantar fasciitis because they also can't rotate the rib cage properly. And that goes all the way down. Remember, it's a system from head to toe and from toe to head. Everything has to be to go through its range of motion for the opposite side or the opposite end to go through its range of motion. And that is the lesson about plantar fasciitis. I'm sure there are some instances where plantar fasciitis is occurring and PRI may not help. But in a lot of instances, it's the inability to rotate our body because of a neck or a torso that won't let us or feet that aren't going through a full range of motion uh, for various reasons. And again, it's probably coming from up top. You just can't get that foot to go through full range of motion. But that's where we got him completely neutral. He was doing his exercises, but he still felt that right foot. And by giving him sensory information of the right arch through lifting up the right uh, lateral heel a little bit and forcing him down was all he needed for his brain to realize, oh, there's the floor, there's the arch, I can relax. Whatever was still tight, relaxed, didn't need it the next day, and his foot feels fine. So that's my lesson on plantar fasciitis.